Welcome to the April update of the Texas Nerd House, y'all. Shall we get started, mister? <laughs> we began a new series on Facebook and Twitter called Guess It's Weight, where we post pictures of obscure old hardware and all of you are invited to chime in with how much you think the item weighs. Everything from old mice to old drives has been on this table, so watch our other social channels to see what else gets pulled off the shelf and weighed. I took delivery of this IBM 5155 luggable computer from 1984. Basically an entire IBM XT in a thick case. But look, it's so stuffed with cards that the MFM controller is bent around the drives. In fact, they even put plastic pieces between the cards and any metal pieces to promote electrical insulation. Yeah, what a mess. Anyway, let's pop it out and shuffle around these cards so that it can maybe flatten out. Oops. Turns out this is a floppy disk duplicator and not a compact clone of the floppy disk controller. So much for that idea. Well then, let's quickly unbox this IBM PS2 P70 portable that came in the mail as well. Hey, it fires up. Guess it's time for me to stage a class photo with all of the 1980s IBM portable computers. Man, they really stretch the definition of portable. Anyway, let's poke around the hard drive of this 5155. Hmm, here's a copy of Lopi, written by Dmitry Pavlovsky, one of the co-authors of Tetris. To me, it resembles Jezball, but you sort the balls by color rather than trap them. Not that you can see the colors well on here, but it's inspiring me to find what other games were written by the Tetris team before Alexei Pajitnov decided to focus solely on Tetris. All right, let's try it once more. There we go. That was by default, I guess. And then these two swap places right like that. Beautiful. Boy, I would say that's a lot nicer than trying to look at this thing, huh? That's a, a little bit harder to tell what's going on. As Pavlovsky programmed on IBM PC clones, they shouldn't need any special hardware to play. Speaking of special hardware of Soviet origin, some of the boards on my Russian PDP-11 clone are going haywire, causing unwanted input and RAM errors. I didn't realize there were electrolytic capacitors outside of the power supply, but the boards definitely have some that need replacement. And what is this? What installed backwards to the PCB silk screen? I'll have to look at the schematic and verify this with someone before I replace and operate it. Yikes. Another thing we're editing down for easy YouTube consumption is a talk recently given on the process of arcade ROM hacking. It goes over use of the main debugger and source code to jump right into code you need to change in order to edit the graphics and game behavior. In particular, this version of the talk dives deeply into the Bally MCR3 system, how to reason out graphics encoding in a hex editor so you can change the graphics as desired, how to revise the checksum so that the game doesn't blow up in your face after you've made substantial ROM edits, having a blurb on how to work with Sega Genesis games, and a workflow leveraging GIMP to build custom graphics to import into your retro games. Sadly, a Texas legend is closing, Tanner Electronics. It's an electronics surplus store operating in Dallas for over 40 years. We went in and ransacked the store for last minute treasures, and got to take a peek into the back room where the Tanners keep huge quantities of old ICs and components such as 8080 chips, 100 MHz decade counters, germanium transistors, and so on. Their last day open to the public is on May 2nd, 2020. Here's what I got on my last trip. We'll see if I get to make another one this coming week. But one thing I could fix without any new parts is the corrosion on the battery holder of my World Cup soccer pinball machine. Hey, why dye Easter eggs blue when you can turn a Q-tip blue cleaning battery acid? Smells about the same considering all the vinegar involved. I have a couple more items that need corrosion cleaned, so I'll be getting to those shortly. And, as everyone finds their own way to make do with the stay-at-home situation, Texas Nerd House puts our own spin on life in hopefully a humorous manner. For instance, here I am improvising workout equipment due to the lack of gyms. Kids make great free weights, if not squirmy, but here I pretend to bench press this 53-pound NEC multi-sync monitor. Well, it's not something I recommend anyone do, especially not without a spotter, and considering how awkward and imbalanced these things are to pick up. But hey, it made for a fun photo op, I guess. Well, friends, that's about it from Texas Nerd House for the month of April. We hope you enjoyed our update. 
And also, we hope that you subscribe to us on Twitter and Facebook so that you can stay abreast of what we're doing in between videos that we post on YouTube. For instance, if you subscribe, you won't miss our next Guess It's Way challenge, where we're going to be pitting an Apple IIc monitor, the tiny monochrome one, up against the IBM 5144, which is the similar tiny monochrome monitor for the PC convertible. Well, anyway, with that, bye y'all!